One thing you hear a lot of people talk about when discussing guitar amp modelers is how they feel and what is feel. Well, depending on who you ask, you're going to probably get a lot of different definitions or explanations as to what a guitar player considers feel when playing through a guitar amp or a modeler. But I've always kind of felt that it really has a lot to do with how the amp or tone that we're playing through reacts to changes in how we hit the strings and our, let's call it, input stimulus. Wouldn't it be nice in the Helix if we had a parameter that was quite powerful, yet maybe even kind of subtle at times, that could really help us to dial in and fine-tune the feel of the amp and also the sound to a certain degree to get it to just feel right to us, whatever that might be, and we're all going to have different ideals. Well, the good news is, and I've done a video in depth about a lot of the deeper functions on the Helix, but the good news is we do have such a parameter. Let's dive over to HX Edit and I'll show you what I'm talking about and how we can utilize it and what changes it's making. Here we are over at HX Edit and I have a very simple preset set up here. It is simply a Placator Dirty Amp going into one of my favorite cabs, the 412. Greenback 25, and I have just basically the stock settings come up. I always turn the C45 off from what the default settings are, but you'll notice that I have two parameters snapshot enabled. I have channel volume, which we all know, and I've talked about this in previous videos, doesn't actually change the tone of the amp model. It just makes it louder or quieter without actually affecting anything else. And we have the sag control, which is snapshot enabled. And this parameter I'm talking about in this video is just that. Now, a lot of folks might ask, what is sag? Well, you'll hear guitar players talk about how an amp has this sag to it that gives it this certain feel and sound. And what that basically is, in a quick explanation, sag is when the power supply voltage drops, not for very long, but just for an instance, based on, like I said before, the input stimulus that is put into the amp. So this would be our guitar playing. And really it has to do more with that initial transient attack, that initial attack of a note. So basically if we have an amp model in the Helix set to sag a lot, which would be the higher settings, when we hit the strings hard, we might feel that the attack is almost compressed a bit and pulled back a little bit. Whereas if we have it on zero, we'll get a much more upfront attack where we don't feel that modeled power supply voltage dropping off. Now, that's fine and dandy to explain, but what does it actually sound and feel like? Well, in the video, obviously, I can't feel this for you. I can only feel what I'm feeling, but we can all try this on our Helix. Now, one very important thing you might ask, well, why do you have SAG and channel volume snapshot enabled? And if you look up here in the snapshots, I have snapshot one is called SAG zero, snapshot two, SAG five, and snapshot three. 3 sag 10. Now the default setting I believe on this amp model and on a lot of amp models in the Helix is at 5 and I, I guess that's done so that we have the most range above and below if we so desire to change that. The other problem is though when we do change the sag setting we also change the volume which would kind of make sense because when we hit that initial note it's acting almost as a compressor and it's kind of squashing that initial attack. So the higher that SAG setting is, the more it's gonna squash that and the quieter the sound is gonna be. So you'll notice on SAG zero, I have the channel volume at nine, but on SAG 10, I have it up all the way to 10 because that was how I was able to match the volumes using an LUFS meter and I got them also just sounding more like they were at the same level. That's so important. A lot of people, when they do these comparisons, do it incorrectly because they don't bother to match the volume. When there's a volume difference between two sounds we're comparing, we're always going to hear that volume difference and we can equate that to the difference of the other parameter that we are trying to compare. So by matching the volumes, we can really kind of tune in more accurately on what is actually being changed by, in this case, the SAG control. So let's just play this on SAG 5, which is its default setting. <laughs> Nice tone, I always love this amp model in the Helix. Let's go to SAG 10. Well, 
And let's go to SAG zero. <laughs> Now, it can be a subtle difference. I definitely feel a difference. Also, if you're listening to this, please listen on a decent set of headphones or a decent set of speakers. Otherwise, these subtleties could easily be lost. But definitely, there is a big feel difference between those dramatic settings. So one of the best ways we can illustrate this is I've set up a little six switch looper here and created a little loop. <laughs> so that we can play the exact same thing through. And I'm gonna let that loop play, and then I'm going to switch between my snapshots. And I want you to listen to the initial attack on each note and see if you can notice a difference. I'll really jump between the SAG 0 and SAG 10 settings, since that's going to be the place where we're really gonna notice the extreme settings. So let's give this a try and keep an eye up here for which setting I'm on as far as the snapshot. Snapshot one being SAG zero, snapshot three being SAG 10. <laughs> All right, what did you guys think? Did you hear that? I think going back and forth a number of times, it starts to get easier to tune in on those differences. Again, if you're not listening on a decent set of speakers or headphones, you may miss the subtleties, but you'll notice that the attack of the note isn't quite so prominent when we're on SAG 10, but on SAG zero, <laughs> There's almost like there's this delay in that, that note blooming or it has a bit of a squishiness to it. Now let's play that loop again. I'll go between SAG 0, SAG 5 and SAG 10 just so you can really tune in and listen for that change. <laughs> finish off that little riff. All right, so what do you think? I, I hope you guys could hear that difference. I think you're gonna find it more apparent when you go test this for yourself. But one thing I would really, really encourage is when you do make these changes, if you set up the same little experiment that I did, please try and set up your channel volume to match the volumes closer. I think a lot of people who are well aware of this tag control and what it does might be surprised that when they match the volume that the differences aren't quite as dramatic as they thought. They definitely are different, but once we match those volumes, it can really take away a lot of differences that we thought were contributed to the SAG, but actually were just the volume difference we're hearing. So once we match those volumes much closer, we get to really tune in on what the actual difference at that SAG control makes. All right, what did you guys think? I hope you were able to hear that difference. Again, I know I've said it a couple times already, but please listen to this on a decent set of headphones or a decent set of speakers. You know, laptop speakers or iPhone speaker is not going to necessarily really show you these differences. I don't know, maybe you will be able to hear it on there as well. But I think it's gonna be a lot easier if we have a decent monitoring system to really tune into those differences that we hear. Now, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on it. Try this out. You know, I hear a lot of people talk a lot of times about, oh, this amp model sounds good, but there's just something that that's not quite right about it. And we always tend to go to our normal parameters such as drive and bass, middle, treble, and those. We maybe ignore the deeper parameters because we're not 
really that comfortable with them. And we could be missing out on that little secret sauce we need to just tweak an amp a little bit to give it that feel and that tone, that finished polish, let's say, to get it sounding exactly like we want. So I hope that was helpful. I hope it was enjoyable. Please like the video and please share this one with anybody who you think would get some use or enjoyment out of watching. I think it could really help a lot of folks to maybe just fine tune their presets to exactly where they want. Please also subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I will be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so, so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.